Hey everyone, it's Job. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to construct a mining rig frame from scratch. This will be part one of at least a two-part series on how to build a do-it-yourself mining rig. You can buy mining rig frames for relatively cheap on the internet, but if you are comfortable with the work and have the tools, you can save yourself one to two hundred dollars by building it yourself. Plus, you get the bragging rights to say you built it yourself, right? All right, let's get started. The parts I use in the construction of this frame are five aluminum angles measuring one inch by one inch by one sixteenth by forty eight inches, a box of stainless number eight by half inch wafter head Phillips self drilling sheet metal tech screws, two eight foot one by two strips of board. I used six motherboard standoffs with the particular motherboard that I used. These will support the motherboard to the frame. I'm also including the motherboard that I used because I use it towards the end of the video to locate where to mount the motherboard standoffs. You can use just about any motherboard CPU memory build that you have for the mining rig. It does not have to be very beefy. For this build, I chose a motherboard that has six PCIe slots for six GPUs. If you already have a motherboard you want to use that doesn't have that many PCIe slots, there are PCIe card expansion adapters that you can purchase. Here's an example of a 1 to 3 PCIe adapter. Here's an example of a 1 to 4 PCIe adapter board that also comes with the GPU riser adapters included. Remember, you only need these if you're using a motherboard with a limited amount of PCIe slots. These parts, quantity, and where to buy them are listed in the description below the video. Okay, let's get started. First things first, we need to cut the aluminum angles to length. For this frame, we need three 30-inch pieces and eight 14-inch pieces. Measure and mark your length and use the saw of your choice to cut. A good rule of thumb is that if it can cut wood, it can cut aluminum. If you're using a wood cutting saw, use a carbide tip blade and consider using lubricants on your blades to prevent sparks and slippage. Remember, aluminum dust is both toxic and combustible. Be sure to protect yourself by using gloves, safety goggles, and a respirator. If you've never cut aluminum, it's a good idea to Google it and do some research to ensure that you go into it with a basic understanding. There's a lot of information on how to cut aluminum with a mechanical saw on the web. So be sure to educate yourself first and always, always make safety your highest priority. I'll be using a good old hacksaw to cut the aluminum pieces. It takes a bit more time, but it gets the job done. When using a hacksaw, it is still important to protect yourself using safety equipment. I'm using gloves and safety goggles anytime I'm cutting anything. I should have had on a dust mask and a respirator, so be sure to use one as you do not want to inhale any aluminum or wood particles. One trick I use is to cut multiple aluminum pieces at once by duct taping them together and cutting at my measurement. When cutting the aluminum, it's best to support it on both sides so it doesn't move around on you too much. If you have two tables or something to support both sides, this will make cutting much easier. Luckily, I have a table that splits in the middle so I can support both sides and cut down the middle. You may consider sanding the rough edges of the aluminum, especially if there's any sharp protrusions. I considered finding some rubber pieces or something similar to put over the ends of the edges for safety, but couldn't find anything in my shop that would work. Beware, the aluminum ends are sharp and dangerous, so be cautious. Once you have your pieces cut, it's now time to assemble them. For this, you'll want to use a drill and the self-drilling sheet metal tech screws. Using a clamp also makes this job much easier, as it helps keep the pieces where you want them. I've built frames in the past without a clamp, but it was much trickier and I had to find ways to support the pieces while I fastened them. Be sure when drilling that you're careful where your hands and fingers are at all times. The tap screws are very sharp and can cause serious injury, so be mindful. Take your time and remember, if you mess up, it's no big deal. Just reverse the screw out and try again. 
using another spot if necessary. Be sure to have your vertical pieces on the outside of the frame. This will provide proper spacing for when you fasten the top short horizontal support pieces. When securing the top 30 inch aluminum piece, be sure that it's sitting on top of the vertical pieces. That way, it's supported not only by your screws, but by gravity as well. The GPUs will be bolted or zip tied to this, so the more support, the better. Secure the 14 inch aluminum pieces that the wood will sit on so that the bottom of the 14 inch aluminum piece is at 4 and 1 8 inches from the top of the vertical aluminum pieces. Get your 1 by 2 wood and mark it with the length of the rig. It'll be used to support the back bottom of the GPUs. It will sit inside the aluminum so mark and cut accordingly. The bottom back of the GPU will rest on this wood piece. Be mindful that the PCIe extenders that you plug into the bottom of the GPUs will need room, so don't fasten the wood too close to the front of the GPU. Be careful if you're using a GPU to do this, as you do not want to damage it by dropping it or getting aluminum or wood scraps on or inside it. I recommend fastening the wood at 10 inches from where the GPUs will bolt in. Now you'll want to drill the holes that the GPUs will be screwed into. I use one of the sheet metal tech screws to drill the holes. I use a GPU to find the location on the left and right side where it has adequate room for both the card and the PCIe extender board. Then I measure the distance between them and divide by 5. I then use this number to mark the remaining holes. These locations end up being from the left at 2 and 3 8 inches, 7 and 1 4 inches, 12 17, 22, and 26 and 7 8 inches. Next, we want to measure, cut, and secure the baseboards. Get a piece of wood and mark the cut. The wood will sit inside the aluminum base. I cut seven pieces of wood. Before I secure the wood to the frame, I get my motherboard out and line up the screw holes so that they're in the middle of the three pieces of wood. Once you have the pieces where they need to be, go ahead and mark their location. I then get my power supply out and line the wood up so that it's properly supported. Once you have the wood where you need it, Go ahead and secure it into the frame with sheet metal tech screws. Once the wood is secured, I want to drill some screw holes for my power supplies so that I can secure them to the frame. This is kind of tricky, but you can either eyeball it or use something like a Q-tip end with some ink on the end to find the spot. Remember, it's better to be a little too high than too low, so that you can get the screw in to secure the power supply. If it's a little too high, you can at least let it hang a bit and tuck something underneath it for support. Depending on how many power supplies you're going to use, you'll want to pre-drill a hole in that many corners. It wouldn't hurt to do all four corners in case of future expansion. If you don't want to use screws to secure the power supplies, you can always use zip ties chained together or something similar. Next, I install the motherboard standoffs that will support the base of the motherboard and allow me to secure the board with screws. I find a drill bit that's about the same size if not a bit smaller than the threaded part of the standoff. Drill a test hole if needed and make sure you can thread a standoff into it with a bit of force. Put your motherboard onto the wood and line it up how you want it to be. Then mark the screw holes with a sharpie or other marker. Drill some holes for the motherboard standoffs. In order to screw the standoffs into the wood, put a screw into the standoff and use that with a screwdriver to drive it into the wood. I also like to use a bit of super glue to make it that much more secure. 
Try to screw the standoff in as straight as possible. But don't worry if one or two are a bit off, because in reality, you don't need all six holes to secure the board. Really, just two or three will be sufficient. I use a pair of needle nose to grab onto the standoff while I unscrew the screw out of the standoff. That way, I don't work the standoff out of the hole. Once the standoffs are secured, I get my motherboard out and verify that it all lines up. Remember, it's not a huge deal if they don't all line up. You can always use pressure on standoffs that are a little bit off to get them to line up better. If some are way off, just remove them out and try again. And that's it! The frame is now complete and ready for components to be installed. My next video will be over the installation and setup of the computer components. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful. Please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. I've included the parts, measurements, and tools I used in the description below. I've also included a few of my crypto addresses, so please feel free to donate if this was helpful to you. Thanks again for watching, and good luck. I'm gonna go